we're changing things up again. Surprise! Stay tuned to figure out what's different about our pull list video this week. everyone and welcome back to Merry Good Comics. I'm your host Laura. This is my favorite co-host, my husband Scott. And we are here with our special edition, but every single one I swear is a special edition. Yeah. So we're back. It's important. Pay attention. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. Uh, so before, we have no egos. None whatsoever. But you keep tuning in every time. So I'm just saying we're doing something right. Hey, I'm happy to be here sharing stuff with you guys. Glad that y'all are back. I'm happy to be here to laugh with you all because Especially if I can't ourselves. laugh at myself, then there's no point. So before we get started, of course, you know, we had an amazing time recently with our two interviews with Ultimate we Comics, did. Sienna. Oh my gosh. Um, then James Parrish with Detonator. So if you have not so checked cool. out those two reviews, please mm -hmm. make sure to do so. Did you know that the Kickstarter that James Parrish did for Detonator was launched today? Launched today, but was funded in less than three hours. Fully funded, ready to go. Excited for that. Can't wait. Yes. So now he's working on his stretch goals. So, like, seriously amazing. Can't recommend the series enough. And we are so excited for him. So, yay. Yeah. Um, for us, we are almost like. Wow, we are knocking at the door of the 250 subscriber giveaway. When we hit 250 subscribers, we're going to pull a random subscriber to get our first level giveaway, which will be... A brand new copy of Witches. Yes. Thanks to Kevin, who is amazing. Thank you, Kevin. And this is our copy of Chu, which I did read, but it is amazing. So I'm like, you've got to check out this series. So I'm like, you know what? Our subscribers have amazing taste just like we do. So you get to check out two of our favorite titles. There you go. But we are already at 235 subscribers. So wow. we are like a heartbeat away from 250. We are very close. So today what we wanted to do was yes. something a little <clears throat> different. And I do want your feedback. So I'm going to ask some questions at the end. So, you know, tune in to the end. <clears throat> but... You know, normally we talk on Sundays about the titles that are coming out for the upcoming week. Yes. Except we realize that a lot of times we're, you know, making recommendations based off of a description that someone else wrote. So we wanted to try something a little bit different. And instead of just saying, here's a title, here's a description, we think it'll be good. We wanted to talk about just the series that we've actually read. Yes. And so part of the uh, started with me saying, you know what, there are several things that I'm subscribed to and I'm getting every week and I've been talking about in the videos that I've been waiting to read. So I can't really promote something that honestly I'm like, well, I'm back here on issue 20, but issue 36 comes out today. Yay. Go read that. I don't know if it's worth reading or not. I haven't read it. Being a fan, I want to be honest with you guys. Yeah. So I thought it makes a lot more sense for me to sit here and talk about stuff that I read this week from our pull list. Well, and there will definitely be times where we take one video and we're going to talk about one title and we're going to talk more about the entire series. Yeah, we'll do in depth. Ladies first. So Ladies first. Let's I get into get this. Start. So the first one that I have is Nice House on the Lake. So this is issue number two. And okay. honestly, it's been enough time that the series has been released. So I think I can start releasing some hints of what's coming with the series. So Well, and the writer on this one's James Tinian the fourth. Yeah, I which knew it was is one of your faves. Okay. Yeah. I have two James Tinian titles in this pile. I can't help it. And maybe there's a Scott Snyder in there. But anyways, with this series, we start with a group of friends. Um, they're all connected through one person, Walter. And Walter invites everyone to this amazing Wait, I bet it's a house on a lake. Yes. <sighs> So he invites them to this I'm amazing, exclusive, paid vacation on the lake. And he says that it is very important for everyone to be there. And they arrive. It is like the best, most picturesque lake house ever. What could possibly go wrong? Then James Tinian personally hunts me down and makes me promise not to release any spoilers of this amazing series. So you just got to read issue number one. And it gets dark and twisty, and it gets amazing. <laughs> so, okay. issue number one, like, dropped that humongous bomb. 
Issue number two took that and is now starting to kind of run with it. It's it's building absolutely brilliantly. I love this series. Sounds good. I don't know if I can give up any spoilers. Yeah, you have to might have to cut it out a little bit. Really? Yeah. Joey, come on, a little nod. We just finished WandaVision. I can go back to the 90s if I want to. Or 80s, whatever that was. Anyhow, so on my list, this is something that actually I have been kind of accumulating older runs of this and thinking we wanted to get into, thinking I probably would like the character. Long story short, I was at my local shop uh, last week and talking to Dan at Ultimate Comics in Raleigh. And I'm like, you know what? I've been debating jumping into Nightwing. What do you think? He said, oh, my gosh, especially the Tom Taylor run. If you haven't read it, you should be reading that. Went through the back issue. I'll grab a few. So I have 77 through um, 81 here that I picked up. I've read all of these um, back to back this week. The reason Dan suggested it for me specifically as a jumping in point was because, number one, Tom Taylor. If you're not a fan of his, where have you been? No. <laughs> It's okay, we can agree to disagree that he is awesome and you're wrong. But, um, seriously though, Tom Taylor as a writer is one of my favorites in multiple different characters that he's done. Also, and lots of other people that I've talked to, there is an appearance in here of a, sp a special pup. It's a three-legged pup. Yeah. And, um, you know, Damien nicknames it Nightwing. Uh, he, Nightwing names it something else. But I had a tripod. We had a tripod. Yeah. And um, because of that tie-in and Dan knowing about my history with my um, special three-legged dog, he uh, recommended it, and he nailed it. I love it. Issue 82 does come out this weekend. Um, I don't want to give away too much because if you've not been reading it, you fully deserve to jump in and, and learn as I did. Just I started at issue 77. I will be going back, finding some more if I can. Um, but you could jump in anywhere and... At this point, it's still building. It's post Joker War. Yeah. Um, there's other stuff that has happened that if you if you didn't read those, you could still jump in, and they give enough of a synopsis in these issues moving forward that you can kind of figure out where he is and what's going on in his world. Um, highly recommend it, though. So my grab yes. was barbaric issue number one. So there was someone who had reached out to me recently and asked if I had grabbed this title. Mm -hmm. And I only heard the description of, it's an X that talks. And if you liked Conan the Barbarian, you're going to like it. It's Conan without Conan. But... And I'm like, I didn't really get big into Conan. It's not my thing. Maybe. Oh, my eh. I picked it up and it's a blast. Okay. just So, yes, there's a talking X. Except... The axe has a very specific code of conduct. That means that basically he will not kill anyone who does not deserve it. And you have to feed the axe. It's a smart weapon. Yes. The barbarian is the only one who can hear the axe. And the barbarian and the axe, their bantering back and forth is hysterical. Because the barbarian, in some cases, wants to kill people. No, and he not. can't. So then he has to follow the oath of the axe and make sure that it is a just killing so that was hysterical then they add an additional character and the three of them together i'm like i'm on board i'm completely in it is definitely a bit of a guilty pleasure read but the artwork is beautiful the storyline i i expected this to just be really really fluffy and instead it was actually really well written really funny and now I can't wait for the second issue. And sadly, it's not released yet, so I am mm. dying. That one I've not yet read, read yet, but I'm looking forward to it, I think, after hearing Laura yes. talk about it. Um, so, next for me, I have been kind of saving up. I wish I had waited another issue or so, because they keep giving me these cliffhangers at the end. But I went ahead and jumped in. I've only got two issues so far, and the next one does not come out, unfortunately, this Wednesday. But it's Betty Page in The Curse of the Banshee. Now, can so you, you explain... You may have heard me talk about this in another video, that I'm a fan of Betty Page, period. But, this one, though, takes place in Ireland, and it involves, you know, Celtic mythology, which I'm also a huge... Um, not just a fan of, but, like, I read a lot, and I watch a lot, and I try and research it as much as I can. 
But for the cynics in the group that are like me and sit here and go, wow, Betty Page. So you basically take a bombshell, you throw her on the cover to basically get guys to buy the comic book. I bet it doesn't have any actual plot line. I bet she doesn't kick butt and take names. Scott's Not response. at all. So um, for those of you that don't know the history of Betty or Betty in comic books specifically, like she inspired the real life Betty Page inspired comic book writers multiple but one of the prominent ones that you may or may not be familiar with is the gentleman who created the rocketeer um betty was the girlfriend of the rocketeer um there are rocketeer comic book series as well in those series as well as in the betty's comics more so in the betty comics though the writers have fun by taking somebody like laura said who looks like betty page and you would think might be the damsel in distress but instead, she's actually the woman that's got the, the gun in her purse and is able to take care of herself and handle herself. As you might think a woman who is very attractive might have to be because she's having to constantly fend off advances, unwanted, you know, that kind of stuff. But she takes it to the next level. Betty can throw down. And part of the reason why I like it is because Betty can throw down. <laughs> um, her and her partners, whether they're male or female, find themselves in situations and it is not Betty that's like, oh, help me. It's usually her that's like, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, one of the other things about it, though, because I love the Celtic tie-in. I love the mythology tie-in. I like the era. This starts in County Kildare in Ireland in yes. 1954. Okay. Um, but the artwork. Okay. So Betty's on the cover, but check out some of the interior artwork. So check out the Banshee. I mean... It's not weak, y'all. It's it's really not. I, I promise you, if you're not a fan whatsoever of, you know, iconography and, and um, you know, comic books, you're not a Dynamite fan, etc. You think they covers don't have enough clothes on them, have to, whatever. Um, pick one up and open it up. If, if you look at the inside of it and you're of the same opinion and you just, you know, read through a page or two, fine. We, we, we can agree to disagree. Um, but it might change your mind. So I will say that before when Scott was grabbing Betty Page's titles, I was like, okay, whatever. Fluffy title. Continue on. Fine. Instead, when Scott gave me that same kind of description, and especially talked about the Curse of the Banshee, where, you know, it's getting more into the Celtic mythology interesting things. So now I'm intrigued. So I will check it out. I will let you guys know if it passes the, uh, the Laura test. Dun, dun, dun. The literature test. The next title, which Scott gets a ton of credit for, is Parasomnia. Now, look at that beautiful cover. This is the B cover, and I love it. Mm. Okay. They had me at Highwaymen. They had me at the cover. I saw, like, a preview of the interior art, which is beautiful, by the way. Like, seriously cool. I'm like, but is the storyline going to be any good? This one is still on my maybe pile. I okay. I may grab issue number two, and I can't quite decide, or I may wait for the trade. I, I can't, but I do want to finish the series. How about that? So this takes place in two different worlds. You have yes. the Highwaymen with, like I said, that beautiful artwork. It's um, kind of more violent. He is on a quest to find this boy who is in prison. Mm -hmm. And then you have the real life that's going on, and at the very end of the issue, present you time. find out that in present time, you have a boy who is stuck in a coma. Mm. So you actually have the possibility that the parasomnia world is tying into the real world. So it's almost like you have to go into this, this dream sequence with the, the highwayman to then rescue the boy to then bring him out of his coma. Kind of a nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. So it... Like I said, it, it could be really, really cool. I like it. Or it could just be a great idea. Why do I get credit for something like that? So Scott gets complete credit because technically I put this in my pull list for the oh. week. And something mixed up. I may have requested it too late. Nothing against Ultimate Comics, but <clears> it was not in the pull box when Scott went to the store. I didn't tell Scott it was there. I assumed it'd be in the box. So Scott was walking around the shop. And he saw the title, and he didn't just look at the title, he saw the cover, and was like, oh, ooh, that's one Laura's going to want. Yeah, 
I was actually talking to Dan and I saw that and was like, that looks like Laura. What do you know about this? And he's like, I don't know. I actually haven't read that one yet. And I'm like, I'm taking it anyhow. Come to find out she wanted it. Yeah, so. definitely Yay. wanted it. So bonus points. Brownie points for me. I get extra ice cream. Always. Yes. All right. So some of you know, and this is one I actually have been kind of reading as I've gone along. But um, some of you know that I've been a Black Widow fan from before the movies uh, was talked about. She's a Black Widow. I might have been a Black Widow fan before the first Marvel movie that she appeared in, uh, in Iron Man, but I don't honestly remember. I've, I've been following the character for a long time and reading the books. Um, this new series, this new run, has really intrigued me because, um, spoiler alert, if you have been reading it, though, from the beginning of this new series, you know that we find her in this, um, it's real life, but she's actually been kind of mind swept and is under the control of a fake reality, like a fake environment put in place by five, a cabal of her worst enemies. Let's put it that so way. it's Wonderverse. It is similar, but she's in present time only, and it's not of her own creation. She's in it actively thinking it's real because they've done whatever they've done to her mind, but they created the husband, job, place, I'll go ahead and spoil it, family, right? Mm -hmm. And then she wakes up. They did it to keep her off the lure trail, obviously, and out of the way. She's a happy homemaker. She's not following them around kicking butt and taking names. When she wakes up, something very unusual happens for her. She doesn't take out vengeance in the way you would think Black Widow would. That happens very early on in the series. And from that point, I was in because I thought, wow, what are you doing with one of my favorite characters? And I kept telling you in some of the videos that we've done in the past, I'm waiting to see. They could go one way, they could go the other. It could be awesome or it could be terrible. So far, it's not disappointed me. It's not let me down. It's actually turning into one of my most endearing storylines, I think, with her. Um, this and her and the Winter Soldier. But this in particular, you see kind of a character develop in a way that we haven't seen in the movies yet. Yeah. Not even in the current one. Okay. Um, and it's something that I'm dying already for the next issue to come out. But it's not out this Wednesday as well. Um, if you're a fan of the Black Widow from the past, if you like her in the movies though... I definitely recommend that you pick this series up. Start wherever you can. Jump in. There is a trade, I think, out for the first four or five now. I think so. But either anyway, grab it any way that you can. You will not be let down by the writing on it. Other thing I was going to say is, yes, we will do a more in-depth you know, review of the movie that just came out. Mm -hmm. But I will say that when we were watching the movie, there's a scene where Yelena is talking to Black Widow and she references this you know, perfect life that Black Widow has that she talks about the family, the kids, and immediately she hear, Scott here heard the description, and Scott's like, that's her actually describing one of the comic book, you know, storylines. So, okay. really cool. Yeah, very cool. But My title next. next. So, Noctera, Scott Snyder. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. We both have been reading this one. So, in the beginning couple of issues of Noctera. We gave you the heads up that, you know, you got to get through the end of issue number two. Yes. So for the first four to five issues, we've been journeying to this location that supposedly has real sunlight. Because yeah. we've described that there are the, there's this darkness and everyone's so heavily reliant on batteries and they're afraid that they're going to become one of these creatures of the darkness. So, okay, we get to the location and in some ways, to be very honest, I was kind of expecting, you know, is this, are we getting to like a conclusion? Are we going to go to like completely different characters now? What's going to be the new story arc? Mm. But then we get to our location and we get to like the very last page. And now we have a brand new plot twist and I'm dying for the next issue again. So they haven't slowed down the writing. They haven't like gone to a nice little like, oh, we're in a happy place. We can like rest on our laurels for a little bit. No. Scott Snyder hooks you right back in. Yeah. And I will say the twist at the end of this one caught me off guard. Completely. Like, uh, it, yeah, he, he's done that twice, actually. So you're right. Yeah. He's yeah. really he's one so of our favorites good. right now. So speaking of great writing and an interesting storyline, this one's kind of new for me. This is the first of eight issues. Um, 
but it is Extreme Carnage. Done. Right, so it's a big event. I know that there's multiple things going on. There are multiple characters that are coming out. I always, like, I like Carnage. Um, first of all, I love this cover. But I always treat it as a, well, you know, if I've kind of caught up in everything else, I'll read some of it, really. I read yeah. Ravencroft. That started really drawing me more into it. And I very much recommend Ravencroft if you're like I was and kind of on the fence about Carnage. Um that being said, I had been waiting for this to come out. She actually had it on her pull list. I was just like, well, okay, cool. If she gets it, I'll read it, right? Um, and then I read it and before you and was like, ooh, you got to get into this one. This one's really I'm good. only halfway through it still. Oh, so good. So I love the setting. I like the writing. I like so far the characters that we have met. And the idea isn't brand new, I'll be honest. But it is something that um, I'm anxious to see what they do with it and how they how they use it. I'm really debating now going and getting some of those offshoots um, and seeing. Because I think the next one's Scream. And well, then... there's Scream. There's Phage I saw is coming out soon, if not already. Um, there's Anti-Venom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious about the others now because the writing in this one was so good. I have a feeling those are coming home tomorrow. Well, we never know. Yeah. Tune in next week and see. So the one for me this week actually is a trade that everyone has been fully aware of. Of course, we have the Joker Wars. This is the Joker Wars Saga collection. I wanted to read this one to compare it to the original hardcover Joker War that was released. Joker War had just the Batman issues. This one has Batman and then, of course, all the you know one-shot spinoff series that was available within the Joker War. I want to know if it was worth it. Now, when it comes to a lot of the major events, whether it is Death in the Family or Court of Owls, we've had a lot of these, you know, one-shot, you know, spin-off series within the major event that typically gives a different perspective. Sometimes they are absolutely essential and sometimes they are insanely redundant. So I was a little cautious about getting Saga for that very reason. However, I will say I read the regular, you know, just Batman issues, about three-fourths of the way through the, the Joker War. And then I grabbed the saga, read this. So much more context is given to you. A lot more of the character development is there. There are a lot of little events that take place that are definitely essential to kind of understand what's going on in this huge, you know, mm -hmm. epic situation. So I actually highly recommend getting Joker War Saga as opposed to the regular Joker War trade. Um, the other thing that I will say on top of this is I had heard from some people saying that in order to appreciate Joker War, you had to read the Tom King run of Batman. So I purposefully went back, read through the Tom King run, and then started Joker War. It is not required reading. Everyone needs to know the wedding because that's kind of essential. But the big event that you actually really need to know more about is make sure you know death in the family, certainly who died in the family. Um, that's going to be a bit more pivotal. Um, there are some things, of course, that happen in the, the Tom King run that, you know, series that I love. But you can still kind of jump into this one and not feel completely lost. So loved it. James Tinian, as always, not good. So the last one for me was a gamble. Um, I saw that this was coming out and that it was a direct kind of prelude to a Netflix series coming out. So I grabbed it. Um, it is He-Man, uh, or to be correct, Masters of the Universe Revelations. Dun, dun, dun. Right? So in this, you get the kind of jumping off point for the Netflix series coming up. I, I've seen the cartoon when I was much, much younger. I'm not really honestly followed anything in this realm since. Um, so to be fair, I'm coming into it kind of with new eyes mm -hmm. and a very minimal exposure from a long time ago to a completely different, probably production value and, and, and writing. This is sort of dramatic in that it's tying things together that I vaguely remember from the cartoon, but they're making it into more of an adult, you know, themed, um, you know, angst filled kind of storyline. Um, 
as you can tell by my struggling with words, I'm not a huge fan of it. I question, like, I'll probably watch the first episode on Netflix before yeah. I make any, you know, decisions. But if it follows along with what I read, I'm not thinking that I'll be following up with the series and finishing it. I could be totally wrong. They could change it. A lot of times, comic book versions to screen are very different, and I prefer <laughs> one over the other. Typically, I prefer the books. This might be one of those reverse situations. Not knocking if you're Masters of the Universe He-Man fan. Um, by all means, I definitely recommend checking it out because I do think they give you a lot of pretty important, like preemptive information that if you've not been around it for a while or you have been following it, you probably want to know before the series comes out on Netflix if you intend to watch it. If you want to just read this on its own and see what happens next, if you're a He-Man fan, you probably dig it. Um, if you're not, I would not recommend this as a jumping in point, bottom line. Well, there you go. So... This was, of course, just kind of our five titles that each of us have read, you know, wanted to give you some little tidbits of whether we recommend them or not. What I want to know down in the comment section is, do you prefer, you know, just straight up, let's stick to the pull list, tell us what you're going to get, or would you rather hear what we actually read, whether we recommend it, whether it's based on, you know, recent releases, ongoing series, trades, let us know because Something we definitely want to make sure that we're giving you content that you want. Yep. But like I said, if this is more your cup of tea, we're here. So as always, this is Scott and Laura from Married with Comics. And we will see you all again very soon. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.